Hi everybody, we're going to see if we can fix this phone here. It's an iPhone 7 Plus that came all the way from the other side of the world. This is another one that came from Hong Kong. This one, I wasn't sure if I wanted him to send it or not because I remember he said that he sent it already to OnTrack. So Crawl OnTrack is a, another data recovery place, so I knew it's not going to be easy if it's already been out for prior repair, but it's worth it to take a shot just to see if there's anything that they missed. And I looked at it really briefly and thought, oh, let's see what we can do for a fun stream. Something to take our mind off of the world for a little bit. See if we can help out Burmy. All right, so this is for Burmy. Let's see if there's anything in the note. This just says... I want my data. Water damage, unable to open the iPhone, sent it to on track, and now sending it over to us. So let's take a look. Let's go to the to the hand cam. And this looks like pretty straight up water damage. Seven plus. And inside, you know, this looks like a water damaged iPhone 7 Plus. Nothing more to say to say about it. All right. So everybody's hanging out here on chat. I've got it so that I can see the chat. A bunch of people have made it in time for the stream. So I've already taken the screws out so that we can kind of get started. And you can see that this was like rusty, you know, pretty serious water damage. I don't know if you can see how rusty those are. They were like red. All right, so let's go take a look at the board under the microscope and to see what we can find. Now, prior repair attempt is my least favorite job. Prior repair attempt usually means software corruption and nothing, nothing we can do about it, but let's see. All right, let's go take off the hand cam and go under the microscope. All right, let's look. So I see some heat here which is a little bit odd somebody's been here before with some kind of hot air to that that melted this little plasticky sticker that's an odd place to put hot air like up here you know that's the equivalent to putting it kind of like up here in the top of the phone so i'm not really sure why they would do that and somebody's been here before with the same kind of treatment and it's a little bit odd that this, I don't know if you guys think this is odd or not. There's some, a redness, like it's red. This, this, look at that. That's, that's red. I've never seen that be anything other than clear before. Hmm. All right. Noted. Moving on. All right, what's going on down here? Down here, we can see, again, somebody's put heat here, doing something with hot air, but we don't know what. And nothing is really bad under there. Crusty, yes. Error 404, warranty not found. All right, but there's still, there's this really hasn't had much done to it in terms of treating it for water damage. Like the water damage that we can see right by the battery connector these guys look pretty crunchy look at that that's just the guy just fell off this guy has not really been cleaned so that's kind of weird yeah definitely look over here this is like you could lick it and you wouldn't need to have any salt on your fries uh-oh Fire department's going crazy. What's happening? All right, so this is all sort of just melted on here. Sticker. That's really melted on there though. Like, how did they do that? That sticker is so melted, it's almost, I don't even know what you would call it. It's like it's a gel of some sort. Gelatinized sticker, gross. Did they put it in a dryer? I think that this was put in a dryer or something like that. So it seems like it was not cleaned, but put
put in some kind of something with heat. All right, those legs look really bad as well. All right, let's flip it over. All right, so somebody has taken the board out before and they've taken this sticker off and we can see more of this, this red, maybe that's just sticker rust, but it's kind of weird. Look at this, what's up with this? Look at that beautiful color on the NAND, but it's shredding off. So this has been like probably, I don't know, treated with something or some kind of heat. A lot of water damage there, a lot of water damage in here. Those are classic places for iPhone 7 Plus water damage. Uh, whoa, that's a lot of damage and some missing dudes in there. That's pretty bad. Eh, water, water everywhere. This is pretty bad. This is a lot of damage. Now this is odd that somebody has, this is, this is really odd. Somebody has been here and has intentionally knocked off this guy. And I don't think that is just water. See, when something is gone by erosion or just water, it leaves behind pads that look like this. But up here, this guy's missing and it's left behind these two little red sort of pieces of that capacitor. That was taken off by by somebody, but we don't know why. Why would you just take that guy off without really even cleaning the board? I have no idea. Damage, damage there. All right, so what we have, that is our complete visual exam. And what we have here is a water damaged iPhone 7 Plus that's never been in an ultrasonic cleaner. It's never actually been cleaned, uh, but somebody has knocked off this sort of fairly common VCC main cap at the end. And that's pretty much it. So, step number one for us, we're gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to give it a, give it a bath. And I think there's probably a good chance that, that we may have um, some, some corrosion under here. So I'm gonna take this shield off. Now the bottom shield, I, I almost never take off. I might end up on this one because it's so damaged, but that one generally doesn't need to come off. So. We're just gonna go for this top shield. Let's get the hand cam and see if we can take that shield off. All right, better shape than the last one. Well, that is true. <laughs> this one, this one has, it, at least this one has sort of like naturally occurring problems that are not due to anybody else. I'm actually pretty encouraged. Like I, I you know, I, I generally don't like to see prior repair attempts, but when the prior repair attempt was just open it up, close it up, then that's great. I'm curious though why they didn't clean the board or even really attempt to do anything. Because this guy really wants his data. All right, let's see if that's enough. Okay. All right, now let's take a look and see what it looks like under here. Whoops. All right, so having taken off that shield, I'm glad we did because there is some grody under there. And we'll need to get all that clean. Yeah, this looks pretty bad up there. All right, so that had to come off and the rest of it, that's pretty normal. Okay, it is ready to take a bath. So I'm gonna go drop it in ultrasonic and I will be right back. So it's gotta hang out and take a bath for a little bit. We'll see what's going on with chat. Main short toaster oven, sanitized in holy water. Looks like heat treat, looks like they microwaved it. I hope they didn't microwave it. Let's look and see, did they microwave it? Usually if they did, then we'll see, hmm, marks kinda like this on some of the antennas in the, the housing, but I don't think so. Hopefully not, but I always
always wonder what like this is bad look at that it looks like burned what did happen to it i mean maybe they didn't do anything this is like like smoke you know like lamp black like there was a fire maybe it generated its own heat and it got hot enough to to melt the plastics i don't think so though pretty bad water damage here in the frame look how rusty that screw is pretty 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 bad all right so i'm interested why would somebody not i mean it looks like they just opened it up and said nope closed it back up uh so that's good news for us though right all right let's see hello from portugal hello from seattle hello from north korea mm, i don't know about that colorado animatronics all right let's see seems like it's been in a water pool for a a while all right let's go ahead and grab it out i'm gonna brush it with 100 percent isopropyl alcohol clean that up a little bit and then we'll bring it back and take another look and i will leave you with the beautiful picture of the charge port while i go grab And now we're back. Okay, so now let's take a look after ultrasonic cleaning and see kind of what looks the worst on here. So it looks pretty bad around the speaker amp. Is that a little bit of, yeah, there's a little bit of long screw damage in there. See inside that screw bracket, somebody shoved a wrong screw in there. Don't know who that was. It could have been during some other screen replacement. Who knows? And looks really bad in here. And it also looks really bad around there. Okay. So that's the deal. Let's go ahead and see what happens if we apply some electricity. I'm going to kind of clean the alcohol off just with a little bit of hot air for a second. Doesn't look any better to me, says Paul. Jessa, what do you think about the oil prices? I think that it is pretty, pretty amazing that uh, you can go to my hometown, apparently. This happened to my dad. And he went to go get some gas. The price for gas was $1.39. That's unheard of in my entire life. When I first became a driver back in the 90s, I remember that if you were lucky, sometimes gas might be $1.99 on sale if you drove around, you know. But $1.39, that's really cheap. And while I was there, they came out and they raised the price to $1.89, which is also cheaper than you'll ever see it ever in your life. And I thought that it was funny is that people, we've come to a point where people are actually pissed off that $1.89 for gas is expensive. Never would have seen that coming. That would be fun to do one of those videos where you go back in the past and you talk to yourself. Hey, uh, you know what? In about five months, you're going to think that uh, $1.89 for gas is a ripoff. It's too expensive. All right, so let's see what happens if we um, 
if we connect DC power, so we'll use the trust based DC, DC power and see what we can see. All right, so hand cam. Did I ever get in touch with the guy that ruined the last board? Nope. I mean, I asked in the ticket, like, hey, who was that? And she didn't reply, so I didn't, I didn't push it and say, no, I want to know. I, I asked her and nothing. All right. Attached battery power and I see 200 milliamp current leak. We have a leak. It's leaking. There's a 200 milliamp current link. So I'm going to disconnect up there at the DC power supply. So that means that we have an inappropriate path to ground somewhere and we got to find out where. So let's see. Um, let's see. Let's see if we can just take a quick diode mode reading on see if there's a leak on good old VDD main, the main power rail. Let's see my favorite place to measure VDD main in the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus is this little test point out here. And this one looks pretty beat up, but let's see if we can get a reading. And this reading is 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is low, should be like 0.3. So let's see, let's, while we're here, let's just check battery line is okay. And I'm going to check, uh, I think these guys are all main caps. Just make sure. Yep, 253. Okay, 253. That means there's a leak, and we're going to try to find out where the fire is. Where is the leak by using the strategy number two? Look for what gets hot. So let's see what happens. Let's see what gets hot. We're going to use the good old... We're going to use the good old Seek Pro if it will work. I haven't used this one for a while, so let's see if we can get something to show up here. All right, so we're going to guess it. I'm going to guess, if I had to guess where's there going to be a main shore, I'm going to guess that it's going to be either up here at the speaker amp or down here at that sort of chestnut area. All right, so we're going to try to make it so that everybody can see. All right, let's go ahead and fire it up. So I'm going to connect DC power. And now let's go on a hunt. Where is the hot spot? Where is the hot spot? Let's see if we kind of go up high and just ask what is the hottest spot on this entire board. And let's see, let's flip it over. Make it so that you guys can see where is the hot spot. And that is within the power management chip. So I am suspicious of that. I don't know about that. That is unusual. Now let's see what's down here. What is hot? What is the hot spot? Right there. And let's see if we can even mark. I'm just kind of trying to make like a little bit of a mark on the chip so that we can come back to find that. That we can come back to that if need be. All right, let's see. What about any of this stuff? And I'm looking to see the temperature dial up there at the top. Let's see. All right, flip. Let's see. Well, 
let's really check in this area. Can you see that? Not really. A little bit. So nothing's really jumping out of us as hot up there at speaker. That's going to be the opposite side of that PMIC spot. All right. So result, result, the, the only spot that seems to be kind of a hot spot, remember it's the thinnest wire that's going to get hot is within the PMIC, but that's not going to be a failure point on this board. Most likely we're going to be looking for, um, you know, some kind of a problem where the water went, right? So let's look at this under the, under the microscope. All right, let's see if we can see our mark. All right, I can see our mark. So this is the little, you know, kind of stripe that I put on the board right here. Let's make it so that you guys can see that. All right, so this is the spot that was kind of getting hot. But if we look at this chip itself, this chip is surrounded by waterproofing underfill. So it doesn't make sense that that we would actually have the cause of a current draw under this chip, that's really unlikely because how would that have happened? Water would have to get there. So let's see if we have, um, if we have a loss of our resistance on a line that's a branch of VCC main and not VCC main itself. So let's, let's kind of see if we can kind of guess by mapping what ball does that actually match to? Let's see. ZXW. ZXW, show yourself. All right. Let's see if we can match the ball. Zorro marks the spot. Yes. Uh, let's see. Where would we look? That's not even an iPhone 7. This is an iPhone 5S. Step one, open up the 7 Plus. All right. Let's see if this is it. All right, I was, would like to try to make it so that I could see the chat. All right, is Jessa still selling masks? Yes, go to store.ipadrehab.com and you can see the two different kinds of masks. All right, so this was VDD main and our hotspot was, let's see, it was, kind of take a, a right there and take a left there. Yeah, it was somewhere kind of around, well, around here. All right, let's see what kind of stuff is going on over here. I2C1, that's unlikely. PMU AMUX bypass, maybe. Baseband PMU to PMU AP to PMU, test clock out. What else? The, the Wi-Fi clock. Here's one. Accessory buck to PMU AMUX. Where did that guy go? So we're looking for a reason, some other line that could actually be the cause of, of uh, that something is short on that other line that we're kind of looking to give us a clue. Let's see. This one maybe PP2V8 Utah. We're going to click all around here in this sort of corner area. Over here. Button power key. Volume down. Maybe what else? Main VDD boost. All right, let's check. Let's just check to see if VDD boost is actually short or not, since it looks pretty bad. VDD boost. Let's check it. His VDD boost looks just really chewed up. VDD boost is chewed up looking, but wow. But it's okay. 0.388.
And that's... <laughs> it's held on by a thread. Alright, so that's not it. Why? What else is in here? Let's look at that other 2v8 thing. We're, we're looking for something that's likely a, a power line. Let's see. Instead of a data line, although it could be a data line. What else is in here? This one. PP2V8. All right, let's check to see if that line is short over at these buddies. Let's click off of ZXW and let's check over here. Point five oh one. But is that the right guy? Let's see. There is the coil looking guy. Yeah, the downside of that and his brother. All right, that line is not short, so go fish. Let's see. Any other reason that we could have another hot spot? Let's see. All right, let's check over on those guys. Although I don't think so. Let's check. Is it you guys under here? All right, 0.43. Not it. Go fish. Uh, ZXW, come on back, buddy. All right, let's see. Whoa. Would you be screwed without the board view diagrams? Uh, not, not really. That's just a tool. I mean, what we're going to, we're not, it's not helping us right now. Um, it's a tool, but it's one of many tools. So we're, tr what we're doing right now is just trying to see if we can come up with a reason why this one, um, one spot, very particular, very crisp spot within the power management chip seem to be kind of creating some heat. Why is that? And see if we can come up with a reason. Let's see if we can just probe around and look for. Oh, here we go. Chestnut to PMU ADC MUX. All right, so that that is a line that is pro almost certainly shorted because it's out here in our really, really ugly area. And there's no way for us to test whether or not that line is short, I don't think. Oh yeah, here we go. There's this little guy. Let's see if we can find that little guy. And if that doesn't kind of give us a lead, then I think we'll have to abandon that strategy. All right, let's see. Uh, is it this guy? 0.367. Let me check to see. Was that the right guy? Nope. All right, let's see. There's a resistor, a capacitor, and then this little dude. All right, I found the right guy. Let's test. Last candidate approach. Are you short? He says, no, man. Falsely accused. 0.521. All right, fine. Fair enough. All right, so let's change our strategy. Um, heat is not really helping us. So what we're going to do on this one is let's eliminate variables because there's a ton of variables that are on here. So um, let's kind of lift off some chips that might be giving us a problem that we don't need for data recovery. So we're going to eliminate some variables and see if that can help clarify a picture. All right. We're going to pretend we're going to operate without a board view. 
All right, let's get rid of Chestnut. Looks pretty crunchy under there. All right, what else looks really bad that we should just automatically get rid of? Let's get rid of these backlight drivers. Whoa. Yeah, that backlight could have been a reason for our leak. Look at that. Oof, that's pretty bad. Yee. All right. The other side of the board at the hotspot is the CPU. So that's not like super instructive. The other things that look really bad are these, these guys up here that I'd like to just get rid of. But let's see. Yeah, they're pretty much going to just jump off the board themselves. Okay. All right, now let's make it cleaned up here at the um, this sort of backlight chestnut area. So that way we can actually see whether or not we have removed any variables that made a difference to our problem. All right. Just a little corrosion. Yeah, nothing that a... Nothing that a hot bath can't fix. This board needs a glass of wine. I really want to know what happened to it. I want Burmy to tell us. I really want to know more of the story of these jobs. When was this phone last working? And I want to know about what happened on its bad day. Oh, that's a lot of corrosion under there. Man, that's just thick. Ooh, that's a lot. All right, let's clean up these pads under chestnut. Now this looks like it's pro it, you know, it seems pretty corrosive. So this looks like a good chance that it's salt water damage. But a lot of times salt water damage looks terrible, but it just hasn't actually killed the components as much as just torn up their outside shells. So sometimes salt water is actually not as bad as it seems. But with water damage, the problem is where the water went. So we're going to eliminate variables and see if the picture can clarify itself. All right. Jessa is employing a dazzle camouflage paint scheme to confuse the virus. Uh, would that be the green screen? I've been trying to not wear green masks on stream, which since we're making, we're trying to do like a lot of gender neutral masks. So a lot of them are green. So that ends up being pretty hard. This one I'm really proud of though. This mask was made by my 15 year old son on the sewing machine. So I taught him how to make a mask. Just this basic skill of, you know, learning how to, to follow a pattern and use a sewing machine. I thought that was pretty cool. All right, $10. Thanks for the board repair today. I was bored and stuck at work. Oh, well you are welcome, lazy git. And $5 from Paul for data recovery. Can't you just move the storage data to a working donor board and recover? No, you can't. You can move it. This is the storage. This is where the data is. But if you separate this, from the double stacked CPU and its little buddy, the EEPROM chip, then you can't read that. You can read it, but it's encrypted. Usually it is easier to troubleshoot what is keeping this board from turning on than going with that CPU swap because you'd have to swap this big chip, which is two chips in one, the CPU plus the double stacked SD RAM. It's doable, but what if it doesn't work? Then you have like even more variables. Did it not work because of technique? Did it not work because of software corruption, etc.? So we we will do CPU swap, but we try to um, take as take fewer risks and see if we can figure out why is this board not turning on? All right, so we took off some chips. 
let's see whether or not we still have a 200 milliamp current leak or not. Let's check. All right, we do still have a 200 milliamp current leak. And let's check to see if our, whoa, if our main power rail is still low. So let's check. Main power rail is not low. It's now 0.335. All right, so 0.34. Oh no, my comments, my battery is, is uh, let me, why can't you do a CPU and EEPROM and NANA transplant to the another board? You could, but what if it doesn't work? It's a one shot thing where if it doesn't work, it's really sensitive. I mean, it is doable, but if it doesn't work, that's the end of the line. So. Um, if you, if anything happens where you were to damage a thing, like I've got two boards sitting right here from drive savers that are, they've come to me with the CPU has been transplanted. I don't even know if that's the CPU for the receiver board or the donor board. It didn't work. And then what do you do? You have nothing left to, to troubleshoot or try other than didn't work. Um, so we, we will do that, but it's not our first tool. It's our last tool. That's just my opinion. All right, so um, we had a short or a partial short on main that we have cleared. Let's check to make sure. Yep, 0.356. All right, so we have cleared our short that we had on main, but we still have a current leak of about 200 milliamps. So somewhere something else is short that's not main. And we looked for heat and we didn't see anything getting hot other than the, the PMIC, which let's do that again. I'm like, <laughs> I've seen like on my chat uh, laptop over here, I have this little touch screen one and it has decided to turn itself, something is touching it, I guess. And it has decided to turn itself onto some geometry homework of my son's. And I had no idea why that was happening. All right, let me try to wake up this uh, thermal camera. So we've got some other line that's not main that is allowing some current leak. Let's see if we can get this to, to show us where. Come on, gotta wake up this camera. Let's see, let me see if I can get my chat back. Kind of bummed out. I liked being able to see chat right here, and now I can't. Now it doesn't work anymore. Okay. All right, let me see what's going on with thermal camera. So I'm taking a look on both sides of the board. And it looks like our only clue, whoops, is that hand cam? Nope. And it looks like our only clue is right here. Oh, you can't see that is right here. See that? The only significant hotspot is right there. So there is some path that is probably coming from the battery to uh, VDD main and then going into this chip and that somewhere else there is a leak 
that's probably a large wire touching ground so that the smallest wire in that circuit is the chip. It's kind of going through that chip. So that is our only clue. Okay, let's see exactly where it is. And this is what we tried earlier. Right there. All right, right there. Yeah, okay. So what we have to go on then, let's kind of try that strategy ag again a little bit, just to see. So our strategy is to, <clears throat> to say, can we identify what line is, is short without actually just, you know, guessing randomly? So the only thing that's getting hot is within this chip. So what line could that be a canary for? Somewhere right there. Let's look and see if we can get a guess. Oh, I really missed my chat. I had chat working. All right, let's see. Let's check a little bit down here. LCM to many B sync. Okay. What else? This is a baseband PMU to PMU AMUX. Another baseband PMU. Chestnut power enable. PP1V2 Maggie. Where does that go? Ah. Over here. Well, that area is pretty rough. So let's check to see if we actually have a short on PP1V2. Maggie. All right, so PP1V2 Maggie, how are we going to measure you? Oh, PP1V2 Maggie, you look pretty beat. Okay. All right, so we'll just kind of take a measurement on one of these little Maggie caps. All right, so let's find it. Let's see. Now I'm just probing around randomly. That's it's incredible, the things that are not short. Like, look at this really chewed up looking thing where you're just like, that can't possibly be okay. And yet it is. All right, so I bet that, you know, we, we can't figure out exactly what line is short. So we're gonna have to go back to sort of making a guess. We've tried for a while to, to kind of do this candidate approach where we're saying what lines could it be under there. We don't think it's the actual chip because that chip can't really have gotten damage. So that seems like there's some lines that go under here to over here to baseband. And then there's also some lines that go to Maggie. Maggie undoubtedly has some corrosion under it. Um, so let's go ahead and just sort of eliminate some variables here to see if we can get rid of that 200 milliamp draw. I'd love to be able to figure out exactly where it is, like exactly what line is it, but I'm not gonna you know, spend forever trying to, to fight that fight, I think. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, poor Maggie. Uh, why doesn't Jessa use Paul Daniels software. Oh, because I, I love ZXW. I think Z, ZXW is the, um, does a great job with iPhones. Paul Daniels stuff, you have to go and hunt down all of these board views. I don't know if I can find them, you know. It's not, it's not as good for working on iPhones as ZXW, ZXW for the, for the win on there. All right, so let's go ahead and, um, 
eliminate the variables of things that we don't need that could possibly be involved. Um, so let's take off the baseband PMIC first. And then Maggie, I can't remember. Maggie is a tiny little processing chip that coordinates a lot of information and I just can't remember whether or not Maggie is required for it to boot. Probably is if I had to guess. So getting another Maggie is going to be a drag. So let's take off the the baseband power chip because we don't need it and that area looks pretty hard hit so we'll take this off we're trying to figure out where is a 200 milliamp leak That didn't look super corroded. These saltwater ones, you never know what you're going to get. Okay, let's clean that up. Just clean in the little bits of corrosion out from here, but I don't think that's going to help us. That wasn't super corroded. All right. So let's check to see if do we still have a 200 milliamp leak? Yes or no? Let's find out. I bet yes. Let's see. We still do. 200 milliamp leak. All right, let's go ahead and take um, take off Maggie, which we might end up having to put back. So we'll see. We will probably end up having to do an experiment. Let's see, I'd like to have a nice pair of iPad Rehab custom hooked tweezers for this one. In fact, I think I'll grab a pair of those. All right, we're going to use the iPad Rehab custom hook tweezers to find out. What's up with Maggie? All right, let's see. Life is like a saltwater foam. It sure is. Sure is these days. Okay. Well, I'm going to save that, Maggie. Does it, it doesn't look super super ugly under there either. All right, where is Okay. Do we still have a 700 or 200 milliamp leak? Yes or no? Let's find out. All right. 200 milliamps. Yes, we still do. All right, let's um, let's take off this. Eliminate some more variables, especially like chips that could be corroded that we kind of don't need. All right, so we don't need this accessory boost. Well, we might need that but we, we could jump it pretty easily. Let's see, what else do we definitely not need that could be getting us into trouble? All right, what could be getting us into trouble is definitely Tigris over here and these speaker amps as well. 
Speaker amps have a line. They get power from the main and send it send it right through to these other little uh, boost lines that can sometimes cause a problem. So let's eliminate those variables of the speaker amp, which can sometimes cause this sort of pre-prompt to boot. Draw, so let's get rid of this one. Grody. And let's get rid of this one. Right, let's clean that up. And then Tigris, we might have to just replace. Tigris is going to be important. All right. How can we know if a board is repairable or not? Well, you can start trying to fix it. And if you fix it, then it's repairable. And if you can't, then it's not repairable for you. And you can ask around and just ask people, Does somebody else want to take a shot at it? And at the end of the line, nothing's ever truly not repairable. But things are sometimes not feasible to repair or don't make economic sense to repair. You could always, if you really wanted to, take two boards when, you know, figure out what's good between them and make one working one. But it may be more laborious or not feasible. Like if you took a working phone, you could use that to harvest some sort of a chip from, but you'd have to destroy that working phone. So then it doesn't really make sense to, to do that repair. All right. Let's see. Do we still have a 200 milliamp leak? And I bet we do. But let's just see it. All right, let's see. Definitely looks bad. It does definitely look bad. You are correct. Let's see what we can do. So we still have a 200 milliamp leak. And I am not sure what line is the problem. So we're going to keep trying to eliminate variables. So another one is Tigris itself. So Tigris receives that battery input. It receives main, but it also has these other lines under there. So we're going to go ahead and just replace Tigris itself on this one to eliminate that variable because it's kind of in this area where there's just a ton of possibilities where the water is going to cause a problem wherever the water went. All right, let's see. But I do wish that we had been like the first to really see it because you never really know, like, could someone have done something to it that makes it like not standard? like microwaving it. You never know. All right, let's get, let's go ahead and replace Tigris then. Let's see. Cam is out of focus. Well, you can't have everything. That is pretty bad. Let's see. There we go. There is one other really unusual possibility, which is the shield that we didn't take off. Maybe there's some sort of a hot spot under that shield that we can't see because we didn't take the shield off. Let's just see with Tigris off what happens just for the fun of it. Same thing, 200 milliamp short, even with Tigris off the board.
But we're going to need Tigris to really do anything moving forward, so we should put him back on. Uh, let's see. Tigris. Hopefully, I got a new Tigris laying around here that I can dig up real quick. All right, let's see. Let's see. There he is. There's a new tigress. That's the old tigress. And this is the new tigress. Get it back on there. The ZX tools have schematics and board view for newest phones. Uh, I don't know. The XW has whatever has fallen off a truck. I do not know if the particular information that you are seeking, I do not know if it ever fell off a truck or not. If it did, then it will be in ZXW. If it never fell off a truck, then it will not. I feel like something is feeling like it's a little bit gritty. Uh, maybe it's okay. Ah. Maybe somebody else in chat can look up in ZXW and find out if the information you seek ever fell off a truck or not. That needs a little bit more juice under there. Okay. Now we gotta let that cool down. And let's keep hunting. That's pretty hot. Let's keep hunting. What else could be the reason why there is a 200 milliamp draw? What sort of other weird and minor line could be short let's see maybe something that has to do with all this crud up here i'm gonna cut the bracket so that we can kind of see let's let's look under there so i'm gonna cut the bracket so that we can kind of get some brushes and clean out under there a little bit and let's go back. Let's see. Well, we're certainly safe cutting it right here because nothing is there anymore. That entire area is simply gone. Well, that's juicy. Crunchy. Really, really crunchy. All right, let's peek under here as well. Why not? All right, now we can kind of get a better look. And let's guess that, that there is still quite a bit of corrosion here in this area that ultrasonic did not get to and neither did anything else that we're gonna clean off with ultrasonic remember it can't get under shields and it has a hard time with things like brackets and places where it really can't get to
And we'll see if we can just figure out where is our 200 milliamp leak. Maybe it's one of these guys because a lot of this looks pretty rough. Now let's see what's left in here. That's uh, pretty close up. All right, let's see. This guy. These guys that look like capacitors. Let's just eliminate these variables. They look really, really bad. That looks really, really bad. Okay. All right. Now let's see. Do we do that? Do anything? Do we still have a 200 milliamp draw? Yes or no? Let's find out. We do. We still have a 200 milliamp draw. What could it be? And I don't know. Let's keep eliminating variables and trying to guess. All right. I don't know what is causing our 200 milliamp draw. One thing that we could maybe try is let's see what happens if we did like prompt it to boot, even though it has a 200 milliamp draw. And just see what happens if you try to prompt to boot despite that. Maybe that would kind of at least maybe show us with some heat. Where is all that juice going? Looking for other, you know, kind of candidates of things that could be causing a problem that we don't necessarily need, that we would be better off without. Maybe audio, I see. Let's get rid of that guy. That guy looks pretty beat. So is he. Uh, I think um, I think accessory boost will be my my next idea. All right, let's check. Let's see that first big cap. Well, what first big cap? I don't know what you're talking about. All right. So everybody's asking the same question. Why not do a, um, a CPU swap to a receiver board? I don't think that that is a, um, a procedure that, that you, that's the last thing that I do, not the first. And here's why, because in a phone like this, there's a, there's a chance that it may not that it may actually have software corruption and well if we if we can figure out like what the actual problem is then it tells us a little bit more about what this was exposed to if i just take the cpu off of this board and i put it onto a receiver board with the nand with the eprom being read and copy that over and it boot loops or something that's in this really broad open-ended category i will have no way to distinguish whether or not that is some sort of a technical failure or if it was always like that if i can figure out what the original problem was and solve that and then the phone boot loops or whatever then it's like i have more information that i I can eliminate that the problem was a technical problem with transfer. So if there's, you know, I, I don't want to throw away information. It would be the same thing as, you know, operating on a board that you didn't look to see where the corrosion was. So in my experience, um, you can spend some time just with the logic of this puzzle to try to figure out what the original problem was. Eventually you can say, well, that's all the time I'm willing to spend and then move it to CPU swap queue. But that's pretty boring, you know, and I don't, I don't even think that's like super, uh, super instructive, right? The, 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 uh, you know, you can have a lot of successes sweep, swapping CPU, but it often 
doesn't doesn't work and you you are then in a tough spot because you don't have any way to know is why did it not work because that cpu was already dead why did it not work because the problem was a software all along why did it not work because you did something you overheated the cpu or you have some problem under the cpu or you're you know it's a it's a really um yeah, it's a procedure that, that leaves you with no information at the end of it. It either works or it doesn't, it doesn't work, and then you really don't have very much left to go on. All right, so this one has a 200 milliamp draw that... Let me look to see what is under here in the 7 Plus. Let's look on ZXW. I don't like to take this shield off for the same reason. It generally is just adding a variable rather than eliminating variables. But let's see. What is under there in the 7 Plus? Right here. Yeah, so in the 7 Plus, what's under there is a whole lot of nothing could any of this stuff if corroded to heck be the reason why we have a um why we have a short oh i just don't think so all right but i guess we'll take it off i don't in, unless you guys have a have a another idea we'll take it off all right let's see just to see whether or not we are overlooking a source of heat because it's dispersed by this essentially heat shield. So let's do it, let's take it off. The reason I don't like to take the shield off is that I don't like to put heat near the Trinity chip. And there's almost, there's, there's rarely any reason to take this shield off. There's nothing under there. So it's almost never part of your problem. Come on. Sometimes trying to hold things out so the hand cam can see it is just too hard. All right, was there any corrosion under there? Kind of. Let's go ahead and knock off these chips. Dare I put a hot air nozzle on while it's still going? Yeah, there you go. We're, we're going to take off this dude. And it is pretty corroded under there. But I don't think it could really be bothering us that bad. All right, let's clean that up a little bit. And now we can look again to see if there is a problem under there. Let's use this alcohol. Then it will maybe show up as heat and it won't be kind of masked by the fact that there was a heat shield on top of that. Okay. I almost feel like going and getting those two phones over there that to show what a botched CPU transplant looks like and why it is a kind of, at least in my viewpoint, the last step. All right, let's see. All right. Um, I think that CPU swap, if you do it a lot, you know, then you, you just, it's like a, you don't learn anything. 
And uh, what we've noticed working with um, folks in China, that people that tend to be quick to do CPU swap, they don't know anything about common failure points that are very straightforward. Once you learn something on this board, for example, what is it, these boards fail the same way again and again. So if you figure out what causes a 200 milliamp draw in a saltwater damage 7 plus, you might have to spend a long time the first time you see that problem, but you will see it again. And if you notice on these streams, a lot of times we'll, we'll instantly, you know, well, let's check here and see these problems very quickly. It comes from this broad experience base of seeing and spending time figuring out thousands of phones because if you figure out a problem once, water goes the same places in every phone, then you'll know where does it go and what does it do. All right, so um, let's, let's see. All right, so what we're doing is we are going to see whether or not we can learn anything from there. So 200 milliamp draw. All right, let's see. I mean, if you wanted to just kind of be a chip jockey, then you could just take off the PMIC right now, you know. All right, so there's still a 200 milliamp draw. But now let's go back to look to see whether or not... Um, Oh, by the way, it's so funny that the two phones that are here that are that are botched CPU stuff are from uh, are from the same people like Rico, for example. He's the guy that did those two. That's pretty funny. And now they're here. And now we can't do anything with them because we don't know what was the original problem and whether or not that's even the same CPU. So that really stinks. All right, so let's... Um, see if heat shows us something different now that we've taken that shield off. So we'll try that strategy again. Ooh, there's something on the, I stuck the camera in something. Oh my goodness. All right, let's see. Let's see. This camera seems to, I stuck it in something. Let's Let's clean that off. I don't want to have flux on the camera. That is not okay. All right, let's let's wake this sucker up. Let's see. Yeah, I wonder, I kind of feel like getting those two phones just to make that example. One of the things that I hate the most, that's the worst, is when we get phones that have CPU missing or CPU has been removed. I will not work on it. If somebody has taken off CPU, yeah, then that's just too many variables. Why did you do that? You know, it's, and we see it all the time, which is why we don't encourage it. We don't want to see people doing that. And that was like kind of our, <clears throat> one of the things that was so like interesting and when we did master class is, you know, I don't know. I mean, we just, just saw a phone that had a CPU transplant that now it's susceptible to water damage. I just don't, I really don't, I don't like seeing the world wanting to use that one trick and we don't we don't like people to use that hammer for every problem okay let's see see if we can learn all right Let's see if you guys can see. I doubt it was Rico. Oh, there's only one Rico doing CPU swaps for drive savers. That's the same guy. All right. Let's. All right, let's see. Can we see anything? in the area now that we took the shield off. 
and it says no not really no all right so this says 116 degrees 117 degrees which is probably heat shining through here yeah that's the hot spot what is under there it is that one ball one circuit but what is it it's right there Trying to make more of like an X marks the spot. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Oh, you guys can't see that. Right there. Okay. We're going to try our same strategy again and see if we can do another sort of candidate approach. Something, there's some spot that is causing this current leak and we don't know where it is can't see the screen can't see the thermal camera well we've shown it's the same thing that it's been the other the other two or three times okay so let's go back and see i tried to make an x <laughs> look at that x marks the spot on that chip and i it's pretty much the same thing all right let's go back to zxw and we're going to keep applying the same strategy to see if we can figure out what is what in here let's see from the it's above this when we do this sort of like map a ball technique the problem with it is it's not necessarily the ball but it's the circuitry within the chip, which may go from here to over there. So that's what makes it this sort of like map a ball method a little bit of a, a big bit of a blunt tool. All right, so let's see. It's kind of right, really seems to be like it's right here. All right, what is that? Okay. PP accessory VAR. So that, doesn't that go to the little dudes by to the top of TriStar? Yes. All right. Is that the thing that is causing a leak? Let's go measure it. Oh, well, that'll be under underfill. Let's go measure it right here at C1921 and say, could it be PP accessory VAR? Let's find out. All right, so which one of you guys is it? I already forgot. Can't remember for more than a second. All right, so it's the, well, that's really, really messed up. <laughs> uh, there's a little resistor and a capacitor right above it that's at the edge of these guys here. A little resistor, the capacitor above it, this guy, I guess. All right. Nope. All right. Nope. Not that guy. But I still feel like that's kind of like a good uh, lead. Maybe it is bridged into something else instead of ground, you know, and that that's maybe causing the problem because that's where the corrosion is. VDD boost, we already checked. PP 1v1 SD RAM. So we did not check 1v1 SD RAM. All right, so let's see. Is 1v1 SD RAM short? Yes or no? Let's find out. And where can I put this probe? Nope. I don't think so anyway. It's 0.135. We'll say that's probably okay. 1v1 SD RAM. What else? That is a CPU power. 
Here's another possibility. PP3VO TriStar. All right, that is a candidate. Let's measure it right there. And we're going to measure, I forgot, which one? The top one. Let's see, PP3VO TriStar, are you short? He says, Nope. Let's see. Not this. Nope. All right, so let's go hunt around. Let's see if there's corrosion underneath this shield. That's going to be my next my next idea. And let's see what your next idea is. Let's see. Um, let's see. Good strategy. What strategy? Let's see. You called out a 2.85 line. I thought we already checked that one. That was the Utah line. Maybe not. I can go back and look for that as well. All right. Um, let's see if I can cut. I just want to know whether or not there's a lot of corrosion kind of on this back side of TriStar or not. Because a couple of those lines are kind of in this area, even though they weren't measuring short. So we don't, you know, it's possible that instead of having a short to ground, that you can have something bridged into a different line. All right, let's see. Let's try to get this bracket to just kind of peel off in a way that doesn't destroy anything else. Let's see. Well, one of them has lost its little, like, top, you know, top piece. That's kind of interesting. Let's see. Does it look super corroded? Not really. I'm looking under the chip to see if it looks like it's going to be super corroded. Not really. All right. Let's look at what are these really ugly looking dudes on the top and bottom. Let's look those guys up. Let's see. ZXW, show yourself. All right, ZXW says. All right, this guy up here is really ugly. And that is VDD main, which I didn't realize was by TriStar. And so is that one below it. All right, so we'll just kind of eliminate those variables. Not it. Not it. All right, now let's see what... Why has this got this red, red stuff on it? Something feels a little bit weird right here. I'm going to use a little bit of low heat and just kind of investigate around here. It feels a little bit weird. Seems like a little, like it's got this odd red color. There's a little pocket there. I'm just going to see if these look okay. They should look okay underneath this fill. Then I want to just check in.
So what has everybody been doing? Stuck inside, endless days. Everybody posted a picture of the view out your window to the view out your window project. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Something just is, feels a little bit odd right here. Yeah, it feels like a little bit hard and a little bit weird. All right, let's go after um, knitting, video games, baking, and working. I noticed that the that the grocery store is completely out of um, bread flour, so everybody's doing their like artisanal uh, bread dough stuff. All right, let's take off this accessory. Um, the little accessory boost chip because it looks like it has a high chance of being corroded under there and we need to get some actual heat to take it off Not as corroded as it seemed like it would be. We'll save that one as well. All right, let's check. Do we still have a 200 milliamp leak? And if so, we might have to try to see if we can see what happens if we just try to say ignore that leak because our main power rail is okay. All right, our leak is now 186 milliamps. And I think we're gonna still be just looking at the same thing with heat. I think we can stop looking around for heat. All right, let's see what happens if we ask this phone to just ignore the 200 milliamp leak, which is a lot. Usually a phone can't ignore a 200 milliamp leak, but we're gonna ask it to ignore the 200 milliamp leak and prompt it to boot. And then maybe we'll see a hotspot or something that might kind of give us a hint on what system really is a fail. But we need to wake up this camera first. Let's try to do that. All right. Waiting for lockdown to be lifted. I don't even know how to make bread, but I also have frozen bread, not used up. Mm, let's wake up this camera. Wake up. Wake up, wake up. I don't know why my phone sometimes doesn't recognize that I plugged the camera in. I hope my charge port's not going bad. That would be terrible. All right. I once removed every IC that had VCC main only to find out the short was a cap. And I also removed all the caps and the last cap was the problem. I have also, I've removed every single cap and chip on main on one phone where I was absolutely convinced that it was an internal board short, even though it didn't really make sense. And finally, Finally found it and got that recovered. Okay. And of course, it was the very last one. Not just, of course, it's the last one I pulled, but it was the last one on the entire board. Like it was the last remaining possibility. And something had made me pick the wrong side of the board to like kind of start working on. All right, so we're getting ready to prompt it to boot and see if see what see what happens and see what happens okay let's see can we prompt it to boot 
with some tweezers in the power button. Let's see. I Yeah, I can't use my face heat detection method. Very sad. With my mask one. But there's a lot less solder fumes, that's for sure. All right, let me try to prompt it to boot where I can be sure that I'm actually prompting it. Prompt. All right, when I prompt to boot, I see 400, 400 milliamps. Hot spot right there. But it's hanging out at 400 milliamps, which is if you subtract the 200 milliamps that are a leak, then it's kind of like a normal phone hanging out at 200 milliamps. Let me look, let me see if I can look kind of closer to me so I can see if there's anything to point out with this thermal camera or not. All right, so at 400 milliamps, let's have you guys look. Tell me what you think. What do you think about, as we look kind of really crisp with detail, right there at the corner of audio, I see. Let's make it so you guys can see. See that audio I see? See the corner right there? Right there. Corner of audio I see. 400 milliamps. That looks like there's a hot spot there. All right, let's keep looking. Here's our same, same spot. That's our leak. Yeah, we're looking around. Anything else? Let's go back. What do you think? Corner of the audio I see. Looks like there's something under there. Now let's flip it. Maybe, maybe it's really the other, this side of the board. Mm. All right, let's take off that audio I see and see what happens. All right. Let's take off audio I see and see what happens. All right. Just curious why the mask? Because I am not at home. I am not at home. I am at the shop. And uh, Katrina was here earlier. Oh my, look at this dude that has lifted himself off. That is not good. Uh, Katrina was here earlier and pretty sure that Chris Christine was here earlier. All right, kind of want to put some flux on that guy. Let's stick him back on. All right, let's get this off. Off with audio, I see. All right. Can something have damaged and shorted the chip itself? Um. Yeah, that's a possibility, but for a, if it were a brain chip, absolutely yes. But it's not a brain chip, it's a power chip. And power chips are tough. They don't tend to get electrical damage like a brain chip does. See if it looks corroded under this corner of audio I see. Does it look chipped or damaged? Not really. All right. Well, let's see. 
That doesn't look like there was corrosion there, but we'll see. Let's clean it up anyway. And let's see. I think that, so I wear a mask when, um, when I'm not at home. I wear a mask just driving around in the car uh, because what you don't want to do with masks is start taking them off and on and touching them. You know, so the, the, it's, it's less of a concern outside of medicine, but if you're a physician, you can't touch the mask. If you touch the mask, you gotta throw it away and get another mask. So that's, that's, if I'm gonna put on a mask, then I'm just gonna wear it and, you know, I might touch it, but I'm trying to not touch the mask. Well, this one had had audio IC. Look how the audio IC pads just float right off. Which means that's a clue. It tells us that this had flexion damage, you know, kind of riding up and down right there. All right, now let's see if we still have our 186 milliamp draw. Let's see. All right. No microscope cam. Whoop. Oh, there we go. So these pads that are traditional ones that are that are in the fault line right here, these ones were loose, which tells us that like all seven pluses, this one kind of had flexion damage, sort of riding up and down a little bit. Okay, let's see if we still have our 186 milliamp leak. All right, let's see. Yep, so we still have our 186 milliamp leak. Let's see if heat at audio IC is still there or is it gone? Because maybe it was actually on the other side of the board. So let's check that out and see what happens. We can only see the blue table. Again, well right now we're trying to, trying to see some heat. So what I'm doing is waiting for the for the camera to wake up. So waiting for this to wake up. Let's try unplug and plug it back in. It's got to start working. There we go. All right. So now let's look to see about our audio IC heat. All right, so audio I see we looks pretty normal and we've got our one hot spot that we are well aware of. And now let's see what happens when we prompt it to boot now. Let's prompt to boot with tweezers. All right, so now when we prompt to boot it hangs at 236 milliamps. Let me try that again. Let's get rid of that. Let's see. 186 and prompt to boot and let's see what does it do. It goes to 236 milliamps and then it hangs out. So 236 milliamps hanging out is kind of like what a brain dead phone would do that has a leak. So let's see whether or not um, iTunes kind of detects it in recovery mode. Like maybe it is got a, you know, it's auto booting to recovery mode. So let's find out. I would like to clear the 186 milliamp leak but uh, that may be a red herring, I don't know. All right, let's see what happens if we put a dock and try to 
see if the computer detects it. All right, prompt, prompt, prompt to boot. And it's going to 236 milliamps and just sort of hanging out. And I don't hear the computer detecting it. Yeah, so now it's hanging at 240 milliamps. So let's see if there's a anything that some heat can tell us at 240 milliamps. Anything new? I think I'm going to look close over here so that I can see, and then I'll let you know what what it looks like. But sometimes you got to have it, you know, kind of you got to have it close to you in order to be able to really see. Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's hanging at 242 milliamps after having prompted this poor thing to boot with a 140 degree, which is really, you know, not not really that hot at all spot within the PMIC and we're looking for any other like clues or signs of heat at all to see where where is it spending that extra energy nothing at the bottom of the board Nothing looks hot around any of that. I'm just going back and forth and scanning. And I'm going to go all the way out to the very end of the board. Try to look at this end of the board. I know you guys can't see that. It's just uh, I got to have it a little bit closer to me than the camera so that I can kind of get a good look. So it's hanging at 242. Two forty two doesn't really tell us very much. All right, so the result it's the same. We still have to it would be really great if we could figure out what is what is causing this dot. Right there, that spot. What is causing that spot? So we're gonna have to keep trying the same old strategy. Nothing, there's no other clues. We've already kind of eliminated variables by saying, where did the water go? And we're going to, to keep seeing if we can identify and put out that leak. We shouldn't have a leak of 100, and 100 milliamps before prompt to boot. And a leak that of 100 milliamps probably is going to, you know, cause a serious problem for it to be able to maintain in the voltages that it needs to operate here. What could that be? Um, if we don't find out with this, then we're going to have to start going around and doing voltage testing to see if we can find like a missing voltage. But the water, the problem with water damage usually is where the water goes. All right, let's see.
this is a kind of an idea though like when something doesn't get hot and you're like i want to see heat then the reason is going to be that whatever is getting hot kind of doesn't uh doesn't have a high resistance not generating a lot of heat so maybe it could be um you know something like in here because there was heat right here that boiled that sticker let's take this off i would really like to know what made that sticker get hot it's pretty unusual why did somebody have a hot, a hot air gun like out here all right so let's see let's also we can kind of probe around randomly i bet there's going to be just like some unusual line but it would be really great to know what what unusual line nope not that guy all right so let's go back and check candidate approach we have that's what we have to go on so we'll keep trying it all right let's see uh let's see if you boot a good board and check that spot on the pmic does it reach that temperature well no it, it wouldn't it a good board um that's not going to have a pinprick of heat right there for sure all right let's get back to zxw and let's go back to pick a ball ball matching pick a ball let's get clues from from here all right let's see we're gonna have to go back this is our only strategy all right let's see let's kind of have you guys participate in the matching up process let's match it up let's spin this ah. so that this camera there we go all right so now we can kind of see this is the little area that we have marked as that's the spot that gets hot so it's kind of you know above this coil and right sort of in the middle of that crystal right so right around there but remember that this could be getting hot because of a line that's roots from the bottom like all the way around here you know so it could be kind of anywhere in a larger area like that could be getting hot because of a problem of a short or a bridge in any of those lines so let's see let's pull up zxw and let's guess all right so it's kind of along here and kind of like this it seems like it's this guy pmu amux buy multi-way hybrid switch output by probably bypass all right does that go anywhere else let's kind of see if there's there's no like little cap or something that it goes to i just don't think that that would get damaged all by itself but maybe it would all right u1801 let's see I'm going to check for a schematic so that we can really look up and see what the heck does N14 go to. All right, U1801. Let's look for a schematic. Let's look for a schematic for the 7 plus. Uh, where's that going to be? Documents? I don't even remember where anything is on this computer. Those are all MacBooks. What about this? Here we go. Oh, that only goes up to the iPhone 6. Where are the schematics on this? Let's see. 
I don't remember where the schematics live. I gotta find them. Let's go on a hunt. I'd hate to have to use the ones built into ZXW. I thought I had a folder on the desktop. No? How about in here? How about that folder called schematics? There's a 5, 6, 8, SE, 10, 7, 7 plus! Yay! I found the schematic! Uh, no? Alright, let's see. Can we add schematic view? Does it work? Yay! Alright, so let's go look up. Uh, what were we looking up here? We're looking up. U1801 N14 ball. Let's look it up. U1801 N14. Let's do it. Control F. U1801. All right. And let's look up N14. Let's just see if it can search it. There we go. All right, so in this section, N14 is by N15. All of these guys are PMU AMUX by P baseband PMU to PMU AMUX read. AP to PMU test clock out. All of these guys accessory buck to PMU. So all of these are kind of like candidates that could be the reason why they're so short. Let's look at this one though and see, does it go anywhere? PMU underscore AMOX underscore BY. It goes to test point 0423. Let's find Oh, B, Y, and A, Y. Let's find T, P, O, 4, 2, 3. Let's see. ZXW. Do you know something called T, P, Anything, yeah, TPO O, what was it? TPO423. Do you know TPO423? He says, Yes, I do. TPO423 is way up on the top of the board over here by the camera. Well, all right then, let's go measure it over there. Let's go look over here. Let's get rid of this nasty stuff. Burned on, that's really burned. I do remember the last one that I was working on where I was using a pickleball method. It ended up being a proximity, um, like a proximity power to the proximity sensor line short. And it ended up being under underfill in a saltwater damaged iPhone 6S Plus. And that I found you kind of using this method as well that I really never would have looked for. You know, it was under the underfill, just like right here, like these guys are kind of under this waterproofing and you wouldn't really expect that to be a spot of damage. Okay, so we're here to measure this uh, 
little test point here to ask, is there a short within the PMU at that spot? Hopefully not. And it is not. So that's good. Uh, let's see. I kind of want to just sort of look around in this in this area. Let's just probe around and see if we can find what is causing that leak. It's not going to be these guys because that is... Let's just kind of use the quick probe around method and see what we can find. Wonder if it could be anything related to this long screw damage that could cause a short. Let's see how spongy that looks. Let's clean this up a little bit. The last time, just kind of remembering from experience, ah, I need more alcohol, boo! The last time it there was a short that was like this that I had to find by mapping from under the PMIC, it ended up being out here at connectors under underfill, which is was kind of surprising at the time. Anything jumping out? Nothing's really jumping out. All right, let's go back to our strategy and see what what you think. All right. Yeah, this is a 7 plus. All right. So this is a 7 plus and we're going to keep this painful method up where we know that something in here seems like a hot spot. Something right around here. And we're kind of looking at all of these different lines. It's unlikely to be a short on this line because that would not generate a ton of heat because it's not going to see any electricity from main. Plus, that's only going to go to the CPU. That doesn't really have a mechanism for failure. So what else? The next door neighbor. Button power key. Mm, well, if... Mm, okay, I don't think that's going to be our guy, but why not? Let's go on a hunt. Button power key. All right, let's just say, hey, button power key, are you are you pulling us down? All right, so which one was the spot that we can measure for button power key? There's four little dudes, and it's this big guy here. Yep, that's it. All right, button power key. Are you short or bridge to something else? Let's find out. Nope, he says he's fine. Not it, he says. Fair enough. Whoop, where are we going? All right, so not not that. Let's check here. Button ringer. Oh, that's the same stuff. Button volume down. This I2C PMU. That's also unlikely. We already ruled out Chestnut because he's not there anymore. PMU. General purpose in out to the Wi-Fi clock. Uh, 
Accessory buck to PMU AMUX. Accessory boost circuit. AMU, PMU clock out. Let's look over here. I think we already checked these guys, didn't we? Oh yeah, here was that 2.8 Utah, which I thought we already checked. So I thought Roy was asking, didn't you call 2.8? I'm pretty sure we already checked this line. The wide angle lens autofocus voltage. Yeah, fine. Not it. Go fish. PP1V8 Hawking. All right, where does PP1V8 Hawking go? Give me a spot that I can measure PP1V8 Hawking. Right up there, PP1V8 Hawking. All right, let's go on a hunt and measure PP1V8 Hawking, which is over here. And it is, is it the second one of these guys? I don't remember. Let's go figure it out. It was, yeah, the left side of the third cap right there. Okay. The left side of the third one, which is going to be right here. Got to... Not it, I think. Let's make sure. But it could have been it. It's a good lead, PP1V8 Hawking. Something like that where it's just has a mechanism to be short because there's water that went right around here. Has a reason to be hiding. All right, let's check all these guys. I've seen one of these little guys up here take a phone out before. Forget which one it was though. One of the little tiny little dudes. All right, that was a good a good guess, but it's not it. It was not 1v8 hawking. Go fish. All right, what's the next door neighbor here? Have we already been here? We've already been there. We've already been here. PP2V9, New Hampshire. A V D D. Where does that go? It goes over here. All right, let's check over there at that little tiny dude. Oh, you guys can't see any of that. Oh, long in the stream. It's just too, too uh, hard to remember to do all the clicking back and forth. All right, where are we looking? Let's make that a little bit more clear. All right, ZXW, show us, where are we looking? All right, we clicked on this guy here. PP2V9NH goes to a tiny little cap that sits in front of this coil. And let's check to see if that area is short to ground. This guy. He says, nope, not me. All right, let's keep looking. VDD boost, we already checked. Main, we 
Already checked. PP1V8 Hawking. We already checked. PP1V8 SD RAM. We already checked. PP Accessory Ver. We already checked. VDD Boost. Already checked. Main. Already checked. Checked. That doesn't have a mechanism. This. What's this? PP LDO 17. That goes nowhere. Nope. It goes up there. Let's check uh, that little dude. Where is that little dude? Nope, not him. I'm pretty sure that was the right little dude. Not that guy. That is who I checked, right? Yeah. Wait, no it isn't. That is a no stuff spot. All right, none of that. What else? Let's kind of like make it be, we're cutting the cake this way. So we'll just keep working around. PP1V8VA. Could be. All right, where does that sucker go? Show yourself. All right, it goes to these two guys. I like that one. I like that. I like candidates like that, that have this uh, idea that they kind of go where the water went up here at this top side. And they're pretty tiny. But it's not him. Go fish. He says go fish. All right, keep going. All right, what else? Main, not it. Checked it. Checked it. PP1V8 Mesa. Where does it go? Where does it go? PP1V8 Mesa. Right here. All right, let's check over there. Let's get rid of ZXW. It was somewhere, one of these audio IC ones. Where, where is it? I can't remember for more than six tenths of a second. It's the very last one in that row. All right, let's check it. PP1VA Mesa, are you short to ground, yes or no? Nope. Let's just probe around. All right, still keep searching. Let's probe around maybe where there's more water. Some of them 
come right off. All right, go fish. Keep checking around. Let's see. All right, let's check here. VDD boost already been checked. Main already been checked. VDD boost already been checked. That guy already been checked. PP3VO Mesa. All right, PP3VO Mesa. Up here. Let's see. PP3VO Mesa looks like a fat no. But I do think this is a really good way to kind of deep dive, to get to know all these different things. Look them all up. What do they do? What are they there for? All right, let's see. The square component looks wonky. Yes, that guy has, remember when we took off uh, the chip down there, that guy, I had to push, you know, he's two pads under there or got nothing. So I just kind of stuck him just with flux, stuck him back down so he did not fly away. All right, let's see. Uh, what are we on now? Let's check. ZXW, keep going. So if you're just joining us, the point is, um, the point is, is not, uh, hey, let's figure out why is this phone not turning on? We're trying to figure out why does this phone leak about 200 milliamps to ground when the it's not the main power rail doesn't appear to have an abnormal resistance to ground um so there's not a short on main there's not a short on many of these common power rails but something is leaking electricity to ground from the battery so something is leaking and in general if you have a phone that has a, a tiny leak it can kind of get by but a 200 milliamp leak is pretty is a pretty serious leak and when you try to prompt it, it can start to, you know, to try to, to, to turn stuff on, but it, it hangs at, at like uh, 200 milliamps after prompt to boot. So this strategy that we're kind of putting all this thought into right now is can we identify and clear whatever is causing this 200 milliamp leak, and if we could kind of patch that hole so it's not leaking to ground, then we could kind of start at a, at a, you know, sort of a blank slate to say, now can you boot? And at that point it was when we would start measuring things like, is the NAND getting power and things like that, if it couldn't boot after we figure out where the leak is. But we don't have very much to go on with, with the question of where is the leak? We know that there is a very, there's a very specific pinpoint within the power management chip that's getting hot. But of course it's unlikely that the power management chip itself is the problem because it's completely surrounded by underfill. It would be really difficult for there to be a mechanism for water to actually go in there and damage, uh, dam and, you know, put two balls together with corrosion. So that's unlikely. So we're trying to guess like, is there something in all of this, you know, water damage that's sort of out and about around the periphery? Is there some component like a tiny little cap on some very tiny little line that is um, a wire to ground. That's, so we're kind of testing different ideas here to find it. PMU crystal, oh no, crystal one. All right, so we're checking to see if any of these circuits that would be expected to kind of like be in that hot spot, if any of them are short. So we're testing with the multimeter just to, to try to learn. Nope, so not that one. And let's check, not this one either. I think I checked for both of those. All right, how about this? PP1V25 buck. 
and we can measure that up on the top of the board. So let's do that. All right, so up here, any of these guys. Nope, none of those guys. All right, ZXW. All right, that one, PP1V2. I think that we already tested that guy, but we'll rule it out just to be sure, because that would suck to like miss one. Multimeter went to sleep. Wake up, Multimeter. Not it. Go fish. What's this? PP1V25. Just tested. VDD main. Already tested. 1V8 hawking. Already tested. already tested. I remember that one. Already tested 2v9. I think we've tested 2v9. Yeah, that was on the... Yeah, I remember testing this guy. That coil. While I'm here though, let's just test around this. I'm probing around kind of just a little bit randomly and I want to look up a guy. So just kind of probing around randomly. When I hear that there is you know 0 0.046 and 0, 0.000, I want to make sure that that component is on a GPU or CPU power rail. It probably is, so it's not actually short. But let's just kind of look that guy up just to make sure that that is not a, a actual problem. All right, so that guy is this guy. Yeah, so PP0V9 SOC fixed. That is a CPU power rail, which means that this is not a shorted line. So that's a big troll that, that confuses a lot of people, um, but it's not our guy. So we're, um, that's sort of like the limitation of the probe around randomly method. All right, what's that? The 2v9, 1v8 hawking, and then this one we have measured. This is all of those. All of these things here. This one is going to just go to. It goes just to the CPU and that's it. Baseband PMU. Well, we already took that guy off to eliminate that chance. Ah, this one we already checked up at this test point. Yep, already checked there. This one doesn't have a way for us to check. Button power key checked. Ringer, volume, nothing to, to check there. I don't think so, right? It doesn't go anywhere that we could measure. I don't think it does. Yeah, 
doesn't go anywhere that we could measure anything. Let's just make sure. M13. Let's look on the schematic and just make sure. Not that M13. Yeah, this M13. Oh, M13 goes, does go somewhere. It goes to R2020. R2020, are you knocked off the board, which makes it get hot over there? Well, I don't know. Where's R2020? R2020, show yourself. All right, let's just make sure that old R2020 is not short to ground. Well, R2020 can't be short to ground. But what we're going to make sure of is that R2020 isn't on a line that is short to ground. All right, so R2020 is located. Let's see. There's one, two, three, and that guy right there. I found him. R2020, that guy right there. Let's test R2020. You're not on ground by chance, are you? He said, nope, I am not. Exonerate that line. Very good. Chestnut, already checked. This one, I don't think we have a way to check it. M15. Let's see. What does the schematic say about M15? M15. Do you go anywhere? He says, no. What if I ask if you go anywhere by asking for PMU GPIO to WLAN? He goes from M15 there to Wi Fi chip. And no place else. Wi Fi, that's it. So, oh, wait. There is a kind of a test point, but it says omit PP7610RF. Is that really a thing, PP7610RF? Let's find out. PP7610 underscore RF. No, I don't know where that would be anyway. All right, back to the grind. Yee. ACC buck to PMU AMUX. All right, we've already checked this. Pretty sure. Yep. All right, let's go to this next row. These are all ones that are, we've either already tested or we don't have a way to test. All right, let's go down to this row. All right, let's go down to this row. LCM to many B sync. Where does that go other than that? Usually with these things that actually can consume enough juice to turn up hot are usually not going to be these tiny little data lines. They're going to be some kind of a power line. Oh, let's see. Let's look at one more row. Not you. Eh, probably not you. 1v2 Maggie.
One V two Maggie. I feel like we definitely already checked. All right, let's check just to make sure. One V two Maggie. Since your little buddy there is so destroyed. 1v2 Maggie's okay! Not 1v2 Maggie. Alright, back to the grind. One of these guys. Does that one have its own test point somewhere? Yeah, right over there. Let's go test it. Why not? Why not be just super complete? All right. Let's see. Yeah, that's a really beat up looking test point. I think we're getting close to the end of the usefulness of this strategy. Pretty much in this last row. Let's see. One V two Maggie already checked, already checked. Buck five. Already checked. We won't be able to tell if that is a short or not. NFC enable. All right, so I think it was kind of getting, I think we have exhausted our ability to use this strategy. So that's the best that we can do to try to use that strategy to try to figure out why is there a 200 milliamp draw. So I don't know why there's a 200 milliamp draw. And I think that this stream is getting like really laborious and I don't think it's a, I don't think that it's, that there's a ton to, to use as a learning case. So for me, you know, this is one, yeah, it's got a 180 milliamp draw. This is one that's just boring. And what I'm going to do next is probably take a break from it so that it's fresh again. But then next that I have to just, you know, I'm, I'm not able to use a, any kind of logical approach to try to figure out why, where are we losing 200 milliamps? And I think that that problem is big enough that it needs to be solved in order to ask this phone to be able to boot. And I think we need to figure it out and figure out why. And then I think that if I, you know, without having any strategy that we just tried to find that, next we're gonna have to go to voltage testing. And voltage testing is more of this like really nitpicky, really laborious thing where we're gonna have to just start measuring around to see if we can find an inappropriate voltage. Because it may be that there's not a short to ground, but that we have you know, something bridged to something else, which will show up as an inappropriate voltage on a line. So we're gonna have to just do a whole lot of measuring and figure it out. But I don't think there's anything else here to kind of highlight. It's just a super boring stream. So there you go, Spectre, thanks for the five bucks. Um, so, you know, uh, let's see if anybody has anything to add in, uh, in chat. Let's see. Uh, stay away from CXW as long as I can. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see. 
This stuff makes me happy to be on the design side of things. Yes. Try blowing hot air at a low temperature all over the board to see which part is causing the PSU to consume more than 200 amps. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Why don't you check the voltages? We want to know the voltages. That is what I would do next. I would do it. I'm going to give it another kind of clean, like I'm going to clean all the flux off and I'm going to, to kind of look, look at it like kind of really clean and dry. Let's see. Uh, Lewis does voltage testing and finds the problems in five minutes. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's not relevant here. And I hope that that's really clear, right? Because the problem here isn't what's not getting voltage. The problem here is where, what line is bridged to something else inappropriately, right? So voltage testing really is a, is a technique that, you know, we're going to use here, but it's not the right technique. Technique voltage testing is something that um, is difficult to do on iPhones because of clearance problems. Um, so that's why we don't use it a lot, but in MacBooks, it's your number one tool. So in MacBooks, you don't go around doing diode mode testing like we do, um, because of, uh, in a iPhone, everything's condensed. So you can measure very quickly, like in a connector In a MacBook, everything's spread out. So it's very easy to voltage test. So it's a completely different, um, different tool. All right. So anyway, this one, I think, um, let's see. I don't think this is a boring stream. Uh, she can't stick her tongue out at us. <laughs> um, so this one I think is, uh, just too boring to stream because I need to clean it up and then I need to, um, to, to go around and see if I can find a voltage that's inappropriate. And that's just going to be really laborious and a lot of looking stuff up and it's not suitable for stream. So, um, I thought I saw a crater in 10001. Yeah. So none of this, this, we're not asking it to turn on, right? So all of these strategies that you guys are mentioning, remember we're, we're not turning it on and saying, why does it not turn on? We're saying, why do we have a leak from the battery is finding its way to ground somehow. And that, and we know that there is no hole in VCC main or battery VCC, which are the two routes from the battery to the power management chip. The power management chip should be fairly docile, except for the PP1VA always lines. And so there's really only a handful of lines that should see any electricity before we prompt it to boot. All right. So nevertheless, I think that, um, this is too boring for stream. So I will update this with a comment to let you guys know if you sit in here and watch it for long enough, what was the problem? By the way, the last one I meant to update, uh, the last one where we did an experiment where we uh, had that botched TriStar and we booted the phone with no ball under the TriStar UART RX ball and it didn't talk to the computer. When I replaced that, I put a jumper on that line, it did talk to the computer. So there's your, the mystery solved on that one and I'll update that one with a comment as well. Otherwise, I don't think there is, uh, I don't think there's much left to learn here. So this one's boring. Um, it's just laborious detective work, but I, I'll do a summary once I figure it out so that you guys can figure out or know what the conclusion was. But right now it's 1021 and I was supposed to be home a long time ago. So I will check in with you guys later.